happy Friday. Thank you for joining me here. Uh, tonight we are going to finish up the flower garden embroidery. So we got a little bit left and we will also be taking off the stick and stitch embroidery stabilizer. So thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, I'm here for about an hour, and I work on projects from beginning to end, so you can be part of the whole process along the way. I am on YouTube and on uh, Facebook at Penguin and Fish, and so you can uh, come join me and chat at either place. So thanks, you guys, for joining me. Again, we are finishing up our flower garden embroidery. So we just have this kind of quadrant left. Uh, I'm also going to be taking off that stick and stitch. Uh, that's that embroidery stabilizer. We've printed the pattern directly to it and we will take that off today in uh, some warm water. So that is the plan. It might go a little late just because we got a kind of a ways to go, but I do want to finish it today. So that is the plan. I'm going to flip you around. Let's get going. Okay, here we are. Just a few more flowers to go here. So we we finished this guy yesterday. We do have to do the stem yet. Actually, we finished him. We finished these leaves here and our um, black-eyed Susan here. So I think I'm going to start off by finishing these little clovers. And I'm going to just go as fast as I can, really. Um, and then we'll do the peony. My nails match the peony today. <laughs> and then we'll hit these leaves and the last couple of French knots. Uh, I think that's that's my plan. I always like having, uh, I always like kind of building a, a road map for how I'm going to stitch. All right, let's see. Okay, I got a, I got a strand. This is kind of a short strand, but that's okay. We'll use it. It's already cut. Might as well use it. So I am splitting the strands into three, uh, the the floss. It's six, it's six strand embroidery floss, and I'm splitting it into the three strands again. I'm just doing that by isolating the one strand and then pulling it, zoop, and it comes right out. And then the thread just kind of relaxes afterwards. Hello, hello, everyone. It's good seeing y'all pop in. I hope you had a fabulous week. All right, and again, I'm on, uh, I'm just uh, checking out your comments here. I am on YouTube and uh, Facebook now. Oh, Barbara got her uh, her hoop needles and bird scissors today, yay! Oh, you're getting started tomorrow, awesome. Oh, that, that sounds like a relaxing weekend. Oh man, if I could choose the most relaxing weekend right now, it would be sitting in the backyard by my garden um, smelling yummy lilacs and uh, just listening to birds <laughs> and uh, chilling with with an embroidery that sounds so amazing. <laughs> I will actually be on the computer most of the weekend, but uh, I'm gonna keep that image in my mind a little bit while <laughs> while I stitch here tonight with you guys. Oh, that sounds nice. <clears throat> Maybe I even have a beer with me. That'd make it extra nice. <laughs> All right. Oh, happy birthday, Robin. It is Robin's birthday today. All right, you guys, we are doing more single chain stitches like what we did over here. And I'll just run through how to do that again. So each of these little shapes we're gonna do as a single, uh, single chain stitch. Uh, sometimes they're called uh, lazy daisy stitches, but again, a lazy daisy stitch is more if those single chain stitches go around a center point like this. These are just kind of every which way, uh, but they all have a pointy end and a rounded end. We are going to come up at the pointy end. All right, and then I'm going to kind of make the shape. I'm going to go around that round shape uh, with my thread. So I'm, I'm doing this one here, and I'm going to go back in the same spot and before I pull the thread all the way through I'm going to come back up at the like apex of that that arc the top arc there 
And I'm also within that kind of circle I created. So now I can pull the thread all the way through. And uh, because my thread was in the middle of that arc, uh, it's going to, ooh, my thread got a little funny there. There we go. Uh, the thread is going to stop that loop from going any further. Uh, but that loop can come loose like this. So uh, we need to anchor it down. We need to tack it down basically. So I'm gonna just go right on the other side and make the tiniest of stitches right on the other side of that um, of that little loop there. And I'm gonna keep it loose. If I keep, if I keep the loop kind of lazy, <laughs> we, we like calling it a lazy loop, uh, then it'll keep that kind of teardrop shape. If I go, if I pull it any tighter, I'll show you what happens. Uh, it, it just looks like one fat stitch. It doesn't have that nice teardrop shape. So let's, let's try and do another one. These are, these are pretty small, uh, single chain stitches, but here. Okay. So this one, oops, sorry guys, I'm getting too close there. Uh, so this one, I, there it's kind of loose and lazy still. So it has that nice arc, but if I yank on that and really pull there now, now the two sides are really close to each other, but you, you lose that kind of teardrop shape. So it just looks like two, uh, two threads next to each other. Uh, and, and that's just, that's just not the look I want. I want, I want that loose kind of teardrop. So I'm going to just loosen that up again. And then we, we tack it to the other side to hold down the loop. But there we go. We are making some lazy, lazy looking loops and you can just kind of readjust it to, to center it again if you need to. But there, I, that's, that's what we're going for. Some nice lazy stitches. All right. And the other way to do it. Ooh, you guys, my needle just busted. Hold on. Let's get a new needle here. All right. So I am going to show you guys the sewing method of doing this too. When you go just in and out of the floss right or in and out with the floss right away. So I've, I've come out at the, the hole there. I'm gonna go back in the same hole and then go in and out in the same motion, but at that point. Then I can wrap that thread around and this will give you the same chain stitch. So see, I'm, I'm in the middle of that circle and then we can just tack it down. All right, let's keep going and finish up these little fellers. All right. Oh, I should have a, a class of a Cabernet. Uh, Rebecca, well, that is my favorite. <laughs> Sit outside by the garden with a glass of Cabernet and do some embroidery. That sounds good. I am down with that. All right, I am just, again, gonna try and go quickly tonight. Uh, I do dig into those stitches a little bit more in the earlier video of this when we do these guys over here. Uh, tonight, I would like to finish this and there's quite a bit to stitch yet. So I'm going to just try and cruise through, but feel free to ask questions and everything still. I will, uh, I'll slow down if you guys um, want to know more about a stitch or something. And I'm just zooming through your comments so I can, if you guys ask questions, I, uh, I will um, do my best to catch them before they go. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes those, um, the needles, especially if you're using them a lot, you are putting a lot of pressure on them by, you know, holding them and, and holding them at different spots. So they can break every once in a while. It's not super common, but every once in a while you get one that's just, just breaks. 
Ooh, oh, you, oh, you've broken machine needles. Yeah, I mean, even, like, machine needles, too. You just, you just hit it the wrong way on something, and, and there you go. Oh, Dee Dee, it's early in the day for you. <laughs> too early for wine for you. <laughs> it is Friday, that's, that's true. Maybe I'll, oh, it's probably Saturday for you, huh? Um. But yeah, maybe I will just chill. Well, by the time we're done here, gosh, it's almost, I was just saying by the time I'm done here, it's going to be pitch black outside, but uh, it's almost one of those evenings that you could just chill and sit outside for a while. That would be, um, it's like the start of where spring starts to get warm and uh, um, there's no mosquitoes yet. There's no giant freaking June bugs yet. Uh, it's It would be a nice night to just chill outside. I wouldn't be able to do embroidery very well. However, I have done embroidery with a uh, headlight on before, or a headlamp, I suppose that's probably what it's called. Uh, <laughs> and that worked pretty swell. Uh, we were watching a movie and I wanted to keep stitching so I put like a you know one of those bike lamps on on my head that was just happened to be around I don't know have any of you guys done that before I know they actually make those for crafters now and sometimes they have a light and a magnifying glass on so I'm kind of curious about those but I don't know if I'm in that dire of straits of actually needing to to purchase that <laughs> that's that's my status on, on those uh, magnifying headlamps uh, for for embroidery and stitching. All right, so I think this is going to be my last stitch here. This thread is getting pretty short, and these lazy day or these um well lazy daisies are single chain stitches, sure do take up a lot of thread. So I didn't even finish the one clover with it. I'm gonna. I'm going to weave in the ends though. So I will get these other um, two little clover petals, I guess, and then we will move on to the other one. So uh, what we found out last night, I was supposed to make these two little French knots pink. All of these were supposed to be pink, but since I made these both purple, I'm going to make like one or two of them over here purple, and then I'll make the rest pink. So I think I might do like pink, purple and then one of these will be purple and the rest will be pink just so it looks like it wasn't a mistake so that there's more more um purple in other spots so i think i'll do that okay weaving in the ends three times that locks my thread in place all right and then we will snip Okay, and I have the other half of that thread here. I'm just gonna weave it in right away before I even flip this around. All right. One. The back is still looking pretty nice. So, uh, you know, I, I've been doing this no knot back, and that's especially nice when you're stitching on a tea towel uh, to not have all, all the knots, which kind of lead to a messy back a little bit, I think. Um, like with a tea towel, you'd probably see the other side of it, right? All right. We are going to jump up. Oh, I have one more to do, and then we're going to jump up and do these other clovers. So uh, I will be staying on line tonight as long as technology will let me, and until I'm done with um, <laughs> till I'm done with this whole project here, or at least the embroidery. I, I don't know if I'm gonna. You know, obviously I'm not going to make it into something, <laughs> sew it into something while we're on here, but um, I would like to take the stick and stitch off. That's the, the, um, the, the sticker that we've put on here, that embroidery stabilizer sticker. 
All right, I'm jumping up to the next one. So that, I, I, I do want to take that off yet tonight. But to do that, we need to finish all this embroidery. And there is a, you know, it looks like a small little space, but there is actually quite a bit of embroidery uh, to do in here. All of these little stitches. And this has actually got quite a lot. This peony's got a lot in there. So uh, my point being is I will be here for a little while. So you're welcome to hang out with me. I'm sure we will be going over um, our normal hour long or so. Because <laughs> next week we will be starting uh, starting a new project. Oh, Tracy says that uh, she just finished a huge project last night. Oh, that is a win. Oh, that just has got to feel amazing. But yeah, so next week we will be starting, oh, well, not starting, but we'll, we'll be working on the Orophil Quilt Block of the Month project. So we will be sewing again on Monday. So we'll be done with the embroidery and we will, we will be back to sewing. Uh, we are going to be sewing May's Block of the Month. So each month, uh, well, first of all, it's by Orophil, who is a thread designer or a thread manufacturer. And they're putting on a quilt along and a different designer does a block uh, each month. So there's 12 blocks total. I actually get, get to be one of the designers this year. So I my, my block is July. So that's coming up quick here. Um, and uh, we'll be doing Mays. So it's released every 15th of the month, which is kind of right before we do our embroidery. So we, we always wait a tiny hair before we, we do the Orophil block. Uh, just because we're doing the embroidery instead. And uh, we'll be just starting it next week. So May's block, it is going to be foundation paper pieced, I believe. Again, I haven't printed it out yet, but uh, it looks foundation paper piece. I don't think it's English paper piece. So that, that's two different types of paper piecing. And if you want to find out what that means, uh, feel free to join me on Monday. It's going to be a fun process. It's one of my favorite techniques for sewing a block together. Ooh, I am stuck on something here. Ooh, crazy. Okay, so I think I'm going to just pull on this. I think I stabbed a portion a portion of Oh my gosh, I have a huge knot now. I think I stabbed a portion of my thread when I did this. So, hold on. Let's see if I can loosen this up. There we go. All right. Yeah, I think I just stabbed through a different part of the thread. So let's see if I can see that. Yeah, and I suppose we'll finish pending, you know, <laughs> crazy embroidery stuff doesn't happen either. I think my thread might have broke a little bit here. We got a whole mess back here, you guys. Let's... Let's pull some stitches out. I think what happened is I, I stabbed a little bit of one of these threads. So I was like going through one of these threads just a little bit and that's kind of weakened and pulled apart the thread. So I'm gonna have to go back a little bit and start a new thread here. Yeah, I've definitely stabbed through the thread. Let's see if I can even get it to a point that I can take it out. Ugh, we might be cutting a few stitches here, you guys. Yeah, and it's totally just tangled. All right. Ugh, let's see what happens here. Man, I haven't had a mess like this in a while. All right, I think I'm going to have to take a few stitches out. Yeah. Yeah. It's a mess, mess. So we will get ourselves a new piece. Here you can see where I've stabbed it through and it, it's caught itself in like a little knot there. Yep, and then, it, then it's torn here. So, okay, I'm gonna cut it where it's torn. 
doing some surgery here. There we go. There's the bad piece of floss. Um, this one's got a little, it's a little frayed now, but I think I have enough to finish this stitch and then weave in the end here. Well, that's annoying. So that, that might happen because I am putting it back in the exact same hole. So in the process, I might actually be stabbing the thread um, a little bit more than I want to. But all right, we, we fixed it. Just annoying. All right, let's get on the other side here and weave in the end. So we just lost one stitch that we'll have to redo. All right, no biggie. Oh, this little Rebecca says it's gonna be her first foundation paper piece. Okay, so it's it's her first FPP, which in quilt land stands for foundation paper piecing. And what that means is we are going to have a paper printout of what we need to stitch. Uh, and uh, that paper printout, we are gonna actually sew directly on to that printout. Uh, and that is our foundation. So we're actually using the paper as a foundation to sew on. Uh, so that's, that's why it's called foundation paper piecing. And uh, it allows you to get really, really intricate designs. It looks like you are magically piecing the weirdest shape together like a wizard, <laughs> but it's actually, from this technique. And I think that's what I love about it is that it looks like an impossibility. Like how did anyone cut those pieces so perfect and have it all line up perfectly and make that intricate, intricate design. Uh, it, it, it's kind of magic. Um, so <laughs> that's, that's what I love about it. And the process, it's a little confusing, but once you get the rhythm of it, then uh, it becomes entire, entirely relaxing. And that's for a couple of reason, reasons, I think. Uh, you don't have to worry about your seam allowance being perfect. You don't have to worry about cutting your shapes out perfect. Uh, and uh, man, those two things are just, you don't even know you're worrying about them while you sew until you don't have to deal with them anymore. Then it's like, dang, this is relaxing. I'm just chilling here, stitching along the line on the paper. Uh, it, it really is fun. Uh, it's, it can be confusing at first because uh, there's a lot of just like weird little steps. But again, it gets so relaxing. Um, I will go through step by step the process, at least the process I like using for foundation paper piecing. There are, you know, different techniques and everything, but I've done a few of them and, it, and this is my favorite. Uh, it, it just is the most relaxing, I think. The, the most not having to use my brain, I guess. And that's, that's what I call a nice craft session when your brain can just be chill and be occupied and not have to think about anything. <laughs> So that's, that's what I'm going for. And, and foundation paper piecing, once you get the hang of it, is perfect for that. Uh, that will be, it's, it's still going to be, Bonnie, it's still going to be 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So uh, I am consistent with this time. So if you come in any day, uh, any weekday, so Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, I will be here working on a project. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the deal. And, uh, I'm, I'm newly live on YouTube consistently now that I have a, my functioning computer that does that, uh, <laughs> took a, took a little while to get the technology figured out for that, but I am now both on YouTube and Facebook. So, and live. So like when you're commenting, I can actually chat with you, uh, Yep, so that'll be Monday I'm starting. So Monday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. 
Yep, and we'll do. We'll be working on the that orophil block uh, for the week. And I suspect I looked at it, and I suspect we will be done perhaps a little quicker than than a full a full week. It seems like it might. Um, it seems just from at first glance, kind of a straightforward foundation paper piecing with not. A bajillion pieces, so I think I think we'll be good. But yeah, I'm excited. That's one of my favorite favorite um, quilting techniques. And again, I think it's just because you feel like a magician <laughs> to be able to stitch something so intricate. All right, I have two more little clover petal guys here, and I think this. This clover um, dot, I, the French knot, I think I am going to make this one purple just because it's going to be right next to the pink peony. So I think that'll be like a, a nice contrast to just have the purple next to it. And then I'll make this one pink later when I'm stitching up the peony. All right, last guy here. Again, I'm, I'm kind of rotating the piece just so my, my uh, left hand can be active, um, feeling the stitches as they come through. That's actually kind of how I knew, well, besides that it was really hard to pull a needle through, but how I knew that there was something going on with that thread a little bit earlier. All right, I'm coming up on one side of that dot for the French knot. Ooh, it feels funny again. Yeah, you guys, dang. All right. So I got one of these crazy little knots on here. There we go. So uh, when you get one of those loopy knots, just stick the needle right in the loop and pull, and the knot should kind of come up against the needle. And then you can go back underneath the knot and then just keep pulling and it'll, it'll come out. But that is a really common, a really common, um, knot that you'll get in a piece you'll get like those loopy knots and it's like dang where did that come from it's it's when the thread just kind of wraps around itself a little too much and it catches itself All right there's our french knot i'm gonna just jump over here i'll go slower with the french knot on one of these other ones one of these i'm gonna make purple and then the other two i'll make i'll make pink You wonder how they dye floss? They dye it in giant vats of, of color. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I think I have the wrong grain of the thread going, Arlo. I think you're right. Unfortunately, I don't know which way I pulled the thread off of the spool, so I, I don't know for sure. Last clover. Or honeysuckle. Isn't honeysuckle kind of like this too? I was thinking it was feeling like there's a lot going on back here, but I think there's just, there's so many, there's just a lot of, um, a lot of thread on the back of these lazy daisy stitches or these single chain stitches that, uh, it feels like I have a mistake back there, but it's just, it's just a lot of thread. Catch that loop. All right, a few more. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm just getting the scent of it. I, I picked a bunch of lilacs. Uh, all of our lilacs are, it's this exact purple. Uh, they're all like this bright purple right now. And oh my gosh, they smell so good. I, I brought a big bunch uh, in and that's in the living room. And then I have a smaller little bunch behind me. So when I'm done here, uh, you'll, you'll um, be able to see, see our lilacs. But I, I, I made sure to cut a few because we're supposed to have rain. Um, pretty much all weekend. It seemed like it was going to rain today, but it, 
but it didn't. Uh, but it's always, they get perfect. The lilacs get totally perfect. And then we have one rain and then they all go away. So uh, if it gets windy and rainy, I don't know if it's supposed to be windy, but if it does, then I'm afraid that, that we won't have any anymore, even though they just came out. Um, so I made sure to grab some and oh my gosh, do they smell good. Smells so good. And these little clover guys are reminding me of them. Because the lilacs have like these teeny little purple flowers on them. Okay, Kathleen is saying that for the Aurifil block next week for foundation paper piecing, it's a good one for your first foundation paper piecing. Or your first F FP. Wait, foundation FPP. <laughs> um... They use large areas, and yes, you should get finished early. Okay, yeah, it looked it looked um, like we could finish it early. I actually prefer foundation paper piecing when you're using teeny tiny little pieces. First of all, it's a great way to use scrap fabric. But second, you don't have to use pins or clips so often because you don't have a big floppy piece of fabric. Uh, it's just like a little teeny piece of fabric that stays in place by itself. Um, I suspect we'll be using some pins and clips with with the Aurifil one because um, they are pretty big blocks. They're 12 and a half inch blocks, which is bigger than than my normal uh, normal quilting world. Um, so they are going to have some larger, floppier pieces of, of fabric. So we'll, we'll be doing more pinning than I usually do for foundation paper piecing, but it's gonna be fun. Ooh, that makes me wonder if uh, I might have to get a little larger, you know, I use a postcard for foundation paper piecing um, to help fold my pieces. And uh, we'll talk about that on Monday, but now I'm thinking a postcard for these big pieces might not be big enough. I might have to get like a manila folder or something. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, you need a kind of a a nice crisp thin edge when you um, are working on a foundation paper piecing project and i use just a postcard just a, a thick you know piece of paper that's actually thin enough to have a nice edge but it's not gonna collapse on you right so um it needs to be like the length of your piece and i think you know, I'm used to doing it with the small itty bitty pieces, but I think the postcard's gonna be way too small. Um, oh my God, I have like three left and I don't think I'm gonna be able to get them and a French knot here. Ugh, you know what? I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna do this one stitch here because I think that's probably all I can do and then I'm gonna get a new thread, Ugh, which is a bummer. But I have a new thread available. But yeah, so I am going to get a manila fol folder out because um, it'll act like a postcard, but be much bigger. Um, I think I'm gonna need that for, for this foundation paper piecing. So if you're planning on working on this, I would try and find something like that, like a manila folder or like the cover of a, of a, like a spiral notebook or something, something like that. The hard piece of board or like cardboard not cardboard, like a card stock, a thick paper. Um, that has a long edge to it. So um, have that ready for Monday or Tuesday. Okay, I'm gonna stitch these in. Back and forth three times. Uh, Denise is asking about the organizing system. So I uh, just love seeing you guys <laughs> with your collections of, of penguin and fish uh, patterns all together. That's awesome. That's And it's just so cool to see them all together in your binders and stuff. All right. I did not win um, floss chicken this time. I It beat me. I, I ran out... Uh, Ran out with a couple stitches left, so that's, that's always a bummer. <laughs> it's always fun to try and have just enough thread for what you need it for, but that did not happen. 
But I already had a, a thing of three split already, so that's yeah, fine. All right, so one of these I'm going to make purple. I think I'm going to do the one closest to the peony. So let's do this one. All right, so here's the French knot a little bit closer. Uh, I'm going to come up on one side of the dot here. I don't want to go in the same hole as I come out of here. So that's why I'm coming on one side and then I will go back in on the on the other side. So I'm almost like crossing over that, that loop. All right, then I'm going to set it on a flat surface. It makes it easier. I'm going to hold the thread uh, with my left hand um, and I'm going to point the needle towards my left hand too. So they're both kind of going up. They're both away from the fabric. And then I'm going to wrap around the thread twice or the needle twice and I'm going to put my my fingers on there because then I can let go and they're they're being held in place the loops by my finger here let's just shimmy this thread out of the way and now I'm going to point the needle towards so I was pointing it away and now I'm going to point it towards the fabric and here's where I go on the opposite side of that dot so there we are on the opposite side I'm only going to go about halfway in before I let go um, of those loops. I'm going to set it down again and then I'm going to just grab this thread and pull those loops so they are against the needle and and the the fabric there. Okay and then I'm going to get my thumb and I'm going to hold those loops in place because I don't want them to get away from me as I pull the, the floss through. So let's just pull slowly and uh, there we go. That is our little bitty French knot. And that's our last purple. I'm going to weave in the ends. And then I think we will work on that peony. All right. Oh, thanks, Catherine. Catherine likes my nail polish. Yeah, I, I ran out yesterday. I ran out. It got just too thick, and I couldn't reach. The, I couldn't reach what was left anymore of of that pale pink. So now I didn't want to buy anymore. So now I'm just gonna go through all my old nail polish, and you'll probably start to see a whole lot of uh, silly colors of nail polish again real soon here. All right, I'm going to just grab some pink. It looks like we have a bit started here. This is already in the three strands. Matches my uh, nails. And we're going to do this, this uh, peony. So we have some options here. Uh, I think what I might do, this might be a little goofy, but I, I'm going to give it a try. If you look at the, my original one here, this is, this is the pattern that I printed out. But I did back stitches for all of them. So I went around with a back stitch around all these little bloops. I think instead I might do a back stitch like up to here and then do it like a lazy daisy with like an open bottom. So I'll come up here and I'll go back down here and then kind of catch the loop up here. I might do lazy daisies for a lot of these or single chain stitches. Uh, we'll kind of see how that goes. First of all, I think it might go a little qu more quickly, but I think it'll be kind of pretty. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. I think I'm just going to weave in, yeah, we'll weave in the stitches here, but yeah, I have not done this yet with, with that, uh, single chain stitch for for the petals, but I think it might look pretty. We are going to give it a go. All right, up here. And you know what? I think I'm going to start right here. So this this big, big kind of leaf, I will do back stitching. I'll start with a forward stitch, I guess. So now I'll do some back stitches and then same with this bloop. It's just like when I get to these little tight little bloops, that's when I'll do, do the uh, single chain stitch. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, we got this extra little kind of 
cut a line here. Let's do that. This is like the underneath of the leaf, or of the petal, I mean. All right, and up top. Oh, <laughs> John's, uh, John, my husband is, is, uh, is trying to get all of y'all to hit the subscribe button and the like button. So, <laughs> uh, do that if you like, I'd appreciate it. So that's on, that's on, uh, on um, YouTube, if you click the subscribe, then there'll be a little bell. And if you click the bell, then you'll get an email um, or a notification when I'm actually going live. So that, that's, um, so you won't, you won't miss it then. Okay, so I am, I'm going to attempt that first lazy daisy here, or the single chain stitch. So I'm going to come up here. This is going to be the bottom of it. I'm going to make the, that little arc again with my thread, but instead of going in the same hole right here, I'm going to go to this next little point here. And then we are going to come up here. So it's going to be a little V there like that. We got that little V and now we're going to just again, tack, tack it down on the other side. Oh, I think that's really sweet. All right, let's, let's do the rest of these like that. So coming up here, back down on the other side and then up at that bottom center. And if you don't come up right in, in the middle of that loop, you can just move the thread. Oh, sorry again, guys. I'm getting a little too close here. Maybe I do need those magnifying glasses. I don't know. <laughs> I gotta look at it pretty close. See what I'm doing here. In there. Oh, and you know what? While I'm right about here, I think I'm going to jump over and get these two little, um, two little French knots. I think this seems like a good, good time to do that. And then we'll, we'll continue around. So let's, let's do these two little pink ones. There's, there's one more down here, but I think I'll get that one once I'm all the way back around with whatever floss I have left. So hopefully I have enough floss. Otherwise I'll have to start a new piece of floss right there. All right. And second. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Gretchen. Yeah. Um, yeah, you get those notifications really well, I think, with, with YouTube. Um, it's a nice big email with, um, with the image of, of what we're working on. So that's, it's just kind of nice and convenient because I know the notifications on Facebook don't always, don't always work. Uh, but there are, there are notifications on, on Facebook. So if you want the notification on Facebook, you have to click the like button and then there'll be a button right after it. Um, I think it says notifications on, and then you have to click that and, and say like show first and notifications on for lives, something like that. All right, so I'm not gonna jump all the way down here for this last one, cause there is a little bit of shaping there. So I'm gonna go about, yeah, let's go about right there and then I'll get that last little stitch so it can get that little shape a little bit better. I'm getting less and less thread here, so it's getting a little harder. I think this was really cute though. They really look kind of more petally, I think, with, with these kind of like open-ended uh, lazy daisy or single chain stitches, I mean. All right. Yep. I am running out of floss. I think, let's see, we could either kind of do this little center bloop cluster, or I think we'll come up this side until we run out of floss. And then maybe when we start up again, we'll just do all this middle. I think, I think that's my plan. So we'll do back stitch, 
along this edge and we might get like maybe one or two uh, of the single chain stitches of the next like little cluster up here um, before before we run out of floss. Oh, you've never had a missed notification on Facebook. Oh, that's good to know, um, Noeline. I know it's just um, sometimes I have a problem with, with that personally. And sometimes you just don't want all your notifications on, so it's it's a little tricky. Oh, Bonnie says she likes YouTube. Yeah, it, it's two different experiences for sure. Um, the nice thing, Facebook is nice because you can reply to people really easily and the replies go right underneath you know who you're talking to you can reply to people on youtube you have to just put an at symbol in front of the person's name but it comes up as a new comment i think they get notified that you commented towards them but it doesn't show up all nice and underneath um, like it does on facebook however on youtube you can play it on a TV, which is awesome. Um, that's super convenient. And uh, um, yeah, I think YouTube's, YouTube's got some good things with it too. So it's, it's really a preference what you guys, what you guys um, like. Oh, so Dee Dee says she gets the notifications, but late. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's the benefit of YouTube is that you'll get a notification like it's gonna be live in 20 minutes or so you know what i mean uh so you'll you'll get that and then i think you'll get another email when we actually are live all right and i think this is about all i can get out of here so let's let's weave in the ends but yeah i know a lot of people really like the facebook commenting oh you can play facebook on your tv oh i don't know how to do that how do you do that does it just, oh, do you just, um, like, beam your phone up? Um, I know with, uh, like, if you have, like, an Apple TV or something, then you can do YouTube directly. Oh, you use the AirDrop. Okay, that makes sense, Lenore. So uh, Lenore uses the, the AirDrop function. That makes sense. So on YouTube, though, I don't, maybe this is how it is on Facebook with AirDrop, but on YouTube, you can actually fill the whole screen up like it's a normal... Um, TV something or other. So that's, that's nice. Oh, I have another uh, pre-cut piece of pink. That's convenient. All right, I'm going to get my three strands out of here. Oh, Leslie Ann is saying that uh, she, she watches on YouTube for the excellent graphics and then reads on Facebook. Oh, that's funny. That works. All right. Where did my ends go? Here we go. All right, get these guys together. All right. Let's grab the needle. Okay, uh, I think now I'm gonna try and get this kind of center area and that'll probably be a whole nother piece of thread at least and then we'll kind of come up around again, um, do this kind of outside and then I gotta pop back in and get that, that one little, one tiny little French knot. We can't leave him behind. So, all right, I'll weave in the end. This is a pretty pink. Oh, got a little fuzzle from the edge of my fabric. And just while, I mean, this is the last day that we'll be, we'll be stitching this, but just a reminder, it leaves next week. So uh, it's it's the embroidery of the month for, for May. So it is going to uh, go out of the shop uh, on the 31st. Uh, so if you want to snag it, it's a PDF pattern uh, right now. 
Uh, the bundles are all sold out. But if you'd like the PDF, it's available till the end of the month. Okay, let's uh, let's do these little itty bitty 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 little single chain stitches. I think this is a fun way of doing this. I think they just look flowy. These little petals as the single chain stitches. I think it's kind of fun. So you have to kind of decide where you're gonna stop back stitching and where you're going to start the uh, single chain stitch. Did I say single crochet stitch again? I feel like I've been saying crochet a lot uh, when I meant chain. There's chain stitches in crochet. I think that's what's getting me. And there's single crochets <laughs> in a uh, in a, or single chain stitches or single crochets. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, in my head, I'm reading a crochet pattern that says single crochet <laughs> or single chain, I mean. Getting a little messed up. All right, let's do this guy. I think he needs a little stitch because, uh, uh, like a little uh, uh, back stitch because if I go, if I start the loop, it's going to go like straight up to to the apex of that. And I think I need it. I need to shape it a little bit more by going out a little first. So that's kind of how I'm deciding um, when to start the uh, single chain. <laughs> I'm telling you, I almost said uh, crochet again, single crochet. Oh, Nolene says that she has the Amazon Fire Stick, and that's easy to watch Facebook. Oh, that's good to know. You know what I suspect it is? Um, maybe, or I don't know. I'll have to check that out again. Uh, but if it's been difficult, like I, we have an Apple TV, so I, I'm wondering if Apple is competing with Facebook somehow and it doesn't make it as obvious or easy. That could be. But I would think that would be the same for YouTube, because YouTube's owned by Google, and I don't know, I would think it, Apple would make it difficult to watch YouTube. I don't know. <laughs> For some reason, I find it easier to watch uh, watch YouTube's on TV, but now, now, now I'm gonna, now I'm curious about the Facebook. I'm gonna have to uh, log on and see if I can get my Facebook on the TV. That'd be kind of fun. Oh, Betty Jo is asking how I got this printed on the material. So this is, uh, we're going to be taking this off today too, once I'm done stitching. I mean, we're, oh, so we're, we're well into the hour and I got, oh my God, we might have a whole nother hour of this. So like I said, I'm going to stay here as long as it takes to finish this tonight. There was a lot of stitching, um, with this yet, uh tonight but <laughs> if you stick around I will actually be taking off this material and it is it is this sulky stick and stitch sulky is the brand name stick and stitch it is uh you can just run it through your printer so it's the same size as printer paper that eight and a half by eleven you run it through your printer you can use um an inkjet printer or a laser printer I'm using a laser printer for mine and you just print the pattern right on it. So I, I literally just took the, the pattern. This is from the PDF. I printed it out and I, uh, I took the, the trace me pattern, the trace me pattern. And I printed this onto a sheet of that stick and stitch. And then I just cut around the edge and stuck it on. It sticks like a sticker and then you stitch right through it. So I did not have to trace any of this. It just came out all perfect. And uh, it is one of my favorite ways to uh, transfer a design because you skip all the steps. I feel like you, you don't have to trace anything. It is just, you print it out. Like you're going to print the pattern anyway. Uh, well, actually you can just leave the pattern on your, iPad or phone too, if you wanted, but, um, it's awesome. You just print it out, stick it on and you're done. And the other nice thing is that it's the exact design too. It's not your like one level removed 
from tracing um, design. It's the actual lines from the pattern. So I love it. And it's actually pretty easy to take off. That's what I want to do tonight with you guys. Oh, you you watch on the Roku and it and the YouTube is darker on there. Oh, interesting. <laughs> oh, Didi, it is awesome. Oh, you can't find it anywhere at the moment. Oh, well, we have a bunch in the shop. I, you know, it's been tough uh, at all like craft supply places lately because the distributors aren't shipping as quickly or as often as, you know, they used to, uh, just cause of, you know, the crazy world we're in right now. Um, luckily I did order a whole bunch of stick and stitch, um, before all this happened. So I do have quite a bit. Um, so if you're, if you're wanting to give it a try, uh, I do have it at penguinandfish.com. There's, I think, uh, there's 12, 12 sheets in one of those packs. And all the little parts that I cut off, you can use those parts still. Like, I sometimes trace a design on there. Let's see. Do I go down here? How much thread do I have left? I think we're going to jump down here. So this one I could have added that little extra stitch, but I'm just being lazy now, I guess, and making this one. Let's see how it looks. Oh, that looks fine. Oh, you want to get a laser printer? Oh, you're into card making. Oh, so can you do foil stuff through a laser printer? Bonnie, I don't know about that at all, but I mean, I guess, I mean, laser, a laser printer works with heat you're basically like heating up toner and it's gosh adhering to to the paper somehow man i really should look that up how exactly um a laser printer works but i know it's it's a heat based sort of thing so that would make sense with some foil stuff right i've never never tried that before though oh you you use the uh christy saying she uses the playstation to watch watch YouTube. <laughs> nice. When you weave the end, Barbara's asking, when you weave the end, do you go about half an inch or a full inch? Uh, I go about three quarters of an inch. I think I do go a bit more than a half inch. A half inch seems a little short. Um, the idea, I mean, it kind of depends what's available as far as stitches. Like if I only have a little half inch worth of stitches to stitch into, then I'll just do the half inch. I might go if it feels like a little loose with going back and forth three times, I might go one more uh, with a small space like that. But I think in general, when I have a lot of stitches to stitch um, the backs of the stitches, I, I go about maybe three quarters of an inch. One inch seems a little longer than I, a little little longer than I'm than I do. But yeah, half inch seems a little less. Oops, almost almost didn't catch this guy. There we go. It is a single chain stitch day. Definitely primarily doing these stitches. And I'm gonna have to get more pink out in a second. Oops. Let's wrap this around again. I'm definitely getting low on thread if I'm having to deal with my loops here. And again, the single chain stitches do use up a lot of thread. So um, I'm thinking we're using more thread than we would have with the back stitch. It's cute though. I do like all these little single chain stitch petals. All right, I think we might do one more before weaving in. 
because this is just going to be easier with a long piece of thread. So let's do, yeah, you know what? I might actually just end it right there. Ugh, unless I'm not going to have enough thread later. What? I can't know that. Let's just weave in um, and we'll see how it goes. So when I have like some scattered stitches like this, I, I'll maybe go a little bit closer to an inch versus here. Like here I got like some nice, just straight stitches. I have so many, so much to weave into here, but here where it's kind of scattered, um, I, the, tr the deal is I want to get as much thread as I can because you know, like how I got, I caught my thread earlier and it kind of locked, locked up. That's kind of what we're going for. So I'm trying to split these, trying to go through under and over and over and under on the way back. So I'm not doing the same route. I'm really just trying to grab whatever I can. And that's gonna, that's kind of going to hold it. So yeah, I, I would say about three quarters of an inch. All right. I got this guy ready. Let's just, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I'm going to just finish off the path I did here that I was going on, and then we'll jump and do this whole outside thing again. And, and again, I probably won't even make it that far. These stitches don't seem to go very far. I do have a little bit more pink, so we should be okay. So I'm probably going just like a hair over the three quarter of an inches again, just cause there's not as much to weave, weave in here. Okay. Oh yes. Uh, Rebecca is right. When you, Oh, yep, yep, and I go back and forth three times. It's that third time that really locks it in place. And you'll notice that if you just weave in twice and pull, you'll you'll see your end um, most of the time still having some give. Like, it'll still pull out if you if you keep pulling it. But that third time, that, that really, that last little angle that you get, that will typically... Um, lock it in place. And if it isn't, if it still feels like it's going to come out, then just go one more time. Each time you turn around, it's, it's harder for it to pull out. All right, I'm going to go this way. I think this will be a little bit easier to get my, a little more comfortable, I guess, to get these loops. I can have my thumb help me out and hold those loops in place. So again, you guys, thank you for sticking around. It's gonna be a bit longer tonight. We are, we still have uh, a lot of this flower to go and I'm still gonna do all of these leaves and stems yet. Um, and I wanna take off the stick and stitch too. So uh, we might actually go a full another hour here. But we won't go like six hours. <laughs> I've done a, I've done a, a at least six hour long one of these before. <laughs> so we won't, we won't do that. Yep, uh, Dee oh, uh, Dee Dee's replying to Betty Jo. Yes, it goes through your printer, but you can actually, if you don't have a printer, you can still just trace the design onto here. If you don't want to put any like tracing, if you don't want to put any markings on your fabric at all, you can just trace directly to this stick and stitch to it. It's, it's kind of, you can see through it like tracing paper. My uh, thread got a little caught here. Got a little split. Let's see if I can even that out again. But yeah, you can put it through a printer. That's that's like the intention. You put it through a printer and then you can get your um, design directly onto it. All right, and I have one more stitch on him and then, oh, so here's one of those loops. If I just pull on it though, it goes up to the, the needle 
and then if I just pull on it more, it'll pop right out. Oops, but I, I stretched out my stitch. Loosen up a little bit. There we go. All right, last stitch for that inner bunch. Let's do this top row a little bit. Oh, you're an hour ahead of me, Arloa, so it's it's probably super duper late for you. Oh, yes, so you could just use a photocopier too. Yeah, you can just, a printer or, or a photocopier, you can absolutely just photocopy it. That will work as well. Um, I, although the, now that I think about it, um, you'll have to do a little test because uh, my laser, I have a laser printer at the office and a laser printer at home and they're both, you know, equal grades of laser printer, just like from Office Depot or whatever. And uh, one goes on uh, this really well and the other kind of smears a little bit, which is annoying. But even if it does smear, as long as you can see the lines and stitch through them, then it's going to work because it's still going to come out uh, with the water. Oh, Teresa, I'm so happy you're here. Teresa says it's good company while she cross stitches. Oh! PJ says that I, I only got a notification just about five minutes ago. Oh! Oh, well, I, I'm super happy that you got the pattern. Yeah, I don't know why you just got the notification. That's a bummer. But luckily, we're still here. And I will be here for quite a bit yet because I'll be finishing this tonight. So um, what we did do... Oh, you guys, I, I just backstitched this whole thing. Well, see, now here you can see the difference. I just got just got in a groove and I started just stitching. So this one I, is all backstitch, so you can kind of see the difference. You can see each little, like, beady stitch, which is kind of fun. Uh, you can In the light, you can see each stitch, but um, I think this just more, looks more dainty and elegant, I think, doing the lazy daisies for these. So I'm going to continue to do that. We'll just have the one. The one that's that's backstitched, which is kind of fun. Be like a little little hidden thing in there. Just got going. Got another little baby knot in there. Getting towards the end of the floss again. Like I said, this uh, when you're doing these single chain stitches, they suck up floss really quickly. He's looking pretty though. I, I like how f fluffy it's looking. So I am getting my left hand work in here a little bit. I'm trying to just uh, keep these loops, like, uh, you know, I have to make this loop that the needle goes in here and my thumb is just kind of helping keep the thread separated so I can go, a, a, so it's a little easier. So I put it to work there. Ooh, here's a little baby one. Yep, we'll definitely need some more pink floss. We for sure lost in thread chicken um, 
with this guy for sure. But I think one more bit of floss will do. Actually, yeah, I think I can get one more maybe and then we'll weave in. One more comfortably and then after that it will be less comfortable to stitch little stitches. All right, and that's it. Let's uh, weave in the ends. Oh, it's cute with just these little little frills there. The back is cute. <laughs> I'm gonna weave into those. Man, I'm just, you get ideas from looking at the back. It'd be fun to have a little flower with little spikes like that. It'd be all, almost be like a, a thistle, even. That'd be pretty. Ah, oh, you know what? That was, um, uh, my mom had a great idea for one of these designs that, that I'm going to have to do once is to do all different, uh, flowers that are actually considered weeds, like thistle, for example, like that gets a really pretty purple flower to it, uh, and would be like a really pretty pattern, I think, you know, and, uh, but you know, it's considered a weed or like like goldenrod or something, that's considered a, a weed. And there's just some pretty weeds and it'd be fun to make them pretty. So that's, that's, uh, or to like honor them a little bit. Or even a, a dandelion, like that would be just really pretty too as an embroidery. So I'm gonna have to get drawing again and we're gonna have to do, <laughs> do, some, do some weeds as uh, pretty embroideries, I think. Okay, last bit of pink. All right, we'll just keep going in the same direction we were. We'll just weave right back into the same spot. Oh, and then I gotta get that last little French knot. Don't let me forget that. All right. Again, it's kind of easier to have those points at the top or it, or it has been for this last little round for me. Oh, I think because then I have my thumb to help me out. That's why. Actually, now I might switch around. There we go. Yes, this is definitely looking more frilly uh, with, with these lazy daisy stitches or these single chain stitches. I'm, I'm liking it. I like it a lot, actually. It's fun. It looks cute with just back stitches, but it's fun to play around with it. All right, we got a little extra stitch down here. Oh, nope, I got, I got more floss, uh, uh, Barbara, yep. And if I run out of that, I got a whole scrap bin of floss that I bet you I could find a pink that's close enough. Ah, we're getting there, almost done with the pink. Then we just have that dark, that dark green left. Ooh, a variegated thistle flower. Well, that sounds like something that would be pretty. They all have like really interesting leaves too, like spiky leaves and I don't know. I think that'd be a whole really fun series. Uh, I think I'm just gonna do this with, well, I'll do a, I'll do a, a single crochet here and then I think the rest will be of this particular bloop will be back stitches because it's kind of big. But yeah, it'd be fun to do a whole series of uh, flowers that people would consider weeds. Oh, 
Oh, uh, yeah, I guess clover is kind of considered a weed too, isn't it? Okay, and these last three we'll do as single chain stitches. They just look fluttery, a little more fluttery, which is definitely what a peony looks like. Oh, Queen Anne's Lace. I, I have done Queen Anne's Lace as an embroidery before. Actually, um, on my book, the Sew and Stitch Embroidery book, the cover design has some Queen Anne's Lace. That's just a, a whole bunch of pretty French knots. That'd be fun to, and, and some pretty leaves. That'd be fun to break out again, too. We should just do a bouquet like this, but all, all weeds. That would be fun. All right, there we go. And then just um, that one other little French knot. And I think to get there, I'm just gonna travel in the back of these stitches just so I don't have a big jump. I'm gonna just travel underneath them. There we go. And now we'll get that last little French knot, a little pink, pinky French knot. Aw, cute. All right, and now let's tackle that green. Let's get the rest of those leaves. They will all be backstitched. And then I have some water in bowls on standby and a towel um, that I will use for um, taking off the stick and stitch stabilizer. Uh, if you're taking off the stick and stitch, feel free to do it in a sink. Just like have water running over it. But uh, for just just to show you guys, I've been doing it in a in a little bowl. But there we are. It's looking so pretty. Gosh, we did a lot of flowery stuff today. Um, all right, let's get that last bit. Whew, we are almost a half hour over our normal time. So thanks again, you guys, for sticking with me. A long, long kind of long Friday. All right, so this is, I believe, the whole rest of it. Yep, the rest of all of this is the dark green. I have a little piece from earlier. And let's thread that. I think we'll just, I don't know, start at the bottom here and work our way around. I guess that's, that's how we'll do it. Like I said, I always kind of like having a little map of a plan. I'm going to weave in the back of these yellow bits. We'll do the lower line and then come back up on the upper line. And I think that'll be just like a short jump um, to the next part. And we will, if there's a, if we have to jump a really far distance, I will try and weave underneath the stitches like I did with the pink right here. So it protects that long stitch. And uh, um, if I go through a lot of stitches, instead of jumping like across a white area, then uh, the stitches should be hidden as well from the front if you're not using like a um, backing of any sort. Oh, <laughs> thanks, PJ. Uh, I was saying this is a good way to spend a Friday night crafting with you all. Uh, thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs> This is fun. Exactly, Barbara. Weed is just a flower uh, growing where it's not wanted. <laughs> yeah, like right now we have, oh, it's just kind of the worst, but we have tons of Creeping Charlie. It's a fun name. Uh, a ton of Creeping Charlie in our front yard. And that just, you can't get rid of that. I mean, it, it, it has, it's, what do they call it? Like a a creeper vine or, or what is that called where it has like a, a little vine that runs underneath the ground and they 
pop up out of that vine and you can't get rid of that vine. I mean, like it's just connected to everything. So uh, we have more and more creeping Charlie every year and we've been trying to get rid of it for like 10 years <laughs> and it just gets more and more. Uh, but we were researching it and originally in uh, like that was a common thing to plant on purpose because it was like a pretty ground cover and it gives this like super duper pretty um, purple flower to it. I mean, it really is kind of cute, but it just kind of takes over everything. And it's just, you know, it gets into the neighbor's yard and, and everywhere. So it's not really a wanted plant in a, in a neighborhood like this. But it was once done on purpose as, as a pretty ground cover. And it really is. It is a, it's a pretty ground cover. I mean, you know, versus grass, you could have just Creeping Charlie, which a whole lot of people in our neighborhood do have just, just crazy overrun um, Creeping Charlie. But it is cute. It is, it's pretty in purple. Ooh, uh, Barbara's saying that it, it smells good. Ooh, I'm going to have to check that out tomorrow. Um, the, the, like, super yummy lilacs are basically the prominent, predominant, uh, smell outside right now which is awesome uh but i'll have to i'll have to look at our creeping charlie they're they're turning purple now john uh mowed the mowed the lawn for the first time this year and he left like some of the really big clumps of creeping charlie and he's gonna try and dig them out but i don't know i don't know how well that's gonna work that stuff is pretty um pretty hardy it, it's kind of has been staying strong every every year we gotta sneak up and do this leaf somehow i could jump over now but i kind of don't want to jump over over a piece of white because this is kind of a dark red color i think i'm going to just come down and then we'll do this stem and maybe i'll come up and get that leaf or you know what maybe I'll do that leaf last and just weave into the backs of some of these stitches or if I run out of thread at some point I, I think that's what we'll do we'll just hold off on that upper leaf by that peony again trying to map it out a little bit in my head DZ says, I could watch and listen all day. Love hanging out with like-minded friends. Likewise, it is just relaxing and, and nice to be with other people that, that appreciate it for sure. doing some big stitches here just to get down this kind of straight line. I'm going to go over the leaf here so the vein um, will look like it's going into part of the stem. These are pretty leaves, I think. All right. Where to next? I don't have tons of thread, but I do have enough to last up one of these stems, I think. Okay, the last little stitch. Eh, I think we'll get, there's like maybe two stitches worth right here. And uh, then we'll come down this way and that might be it for this particular piece of floss. down here. Uh, we'll do this in one big stitch, I think. And back up this way. This is like the, this little fork coming off here is like the bottom of this leaf that's going up there. Oh, you know what? I should have kind of gone over here. I am kind of messing up my map a little bit. I might have to uh, start and stop a few times. Although I'm almost out of thread. Could just kind of start up again somewhere. 
wherever we want. Oh, thanks, Teresa. Yes, these are... I'm definitely feeling the spring bright colors. I keep thinking um, this clover here is just the exact color of the lilacs outside, and that's just making me so happy right now, our lilacs. They are just ugh, perfectly in bloom right now and smell amazing. And I'm scared they're all going to go away because it's going to rain this weekend. And, uh, you know, they always, every year, they get just perfect. And then a rain comes and then, then it's just gone. All right, do I weave in the end? Yeah, you know what? I have enough for maybe three more stitches somewhere, but... I have to jump to the next leaf, and I think it's just going to be easier to start another another um, thread. So we're going to weave in the ends. Uh, again, I'm doing it three times. The third kind of locks it in place. Oops, got stuck there. All right, then I can snip it right at the base there, and let's find some more green. Oh, I might even have some cut still. My, I have, like, my mass of... A crazy nest right here, but look at oh, I already have another bit already cut. Perfect. It's a little shorter, so I suspect I had to stitch just a couple of stitches um, earlier, and then didn't need the rest. So I might have. This is my might have been used already. All right. Okay. What to do? I think let's do this guy and then we'll weave into the back and then do this one and then i'll either jump across or i'll weave in the ends and probably start that's probably what i'll do i'll weave in the ends and then start this one fresh hey but we're almost done that's it just the three leaves yay okay i'm excited we're getting to the part where we get to take off the stick and stitch which is always exciting that's when you get to see what it really looks like um the first time. It's also a little scary because you are getting your embroidery wet, so that's a little nerve-wracking for, I don't know, no real reason, but you're affecting a piece that you've worked on for a long time, right? So that potential of something going wrong, there's, there's that, but there's really nothing to be nervous about. And actually, if you're nervous about um, your thread colors bleeding, um, you can, while you're doing this, you can put in a color catcher um, by Shout. Shout sells a thing, a little, like, looks like a fabric softener sheet um, called a color catcher, and that will kind of collect any excess dye that comes off. So that's... Uh, when you um, get a thread like that, it'll probably either be like the brightest bright blue or or red or maybe like a really dark brown. If any color bleeds, it's going to be one of those. And uh, yeah, that color catcher should help. But I think we'll be totally fine. I don't think we're going to have any... Any issue here? Okay. Get this little vein. Again, thank you guys for sticking around with me. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'll do a, a really long uh, stream like this. So this is this is uh, just a twice as long stream, not a not a six times as long stream. All right, that guy's done. I'm gonna weave into the. Where did that leaf go? Oh, it's over here. I'm gonna weave into the backs of these stitches. There we go. And now I'll start this little leaf. I think I think I'm gonna go start with the outside leaf and then come back down for the vein. Ooh, we might be playing some thread chicken here. So I might actually switch to the 
the one forward and one back stitch because again that's that's a way to preserve thread a little bit when you need to. I think the stitches, I mean, very, in a very, very subtle way, don't look quite as nice as if you're just doing back stitch, but it's barely noticeable. And right now I'm trying to save thread here. Ugh, because it'd be annoying to do like one stitch on, or like be like, have like one stitch left. But I've been losing a lot at thread chicken, chicken tonight, so <laughs> might just be the way, way of the day. I'm trying to do bigger stitches to just to preserve thread. Ugh. Hope we'll have enough. Ugh, I need about like five more stitches out of this thread. Let's see if I can do it. Big stitches. Oops, and I'm stabbing myself now too. That must mean it's almost time to end. <laughs> Once I start stabbing myself, uh, then we're getting there. Ooh, I'm doing this in four stitches, not five. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, we totally did it. We have enough thread. I am going to have to start a new one though for our last little leaf over here. But that's okay. Ugh, I'm also gonna have to cut a new piece of thread for that too. All right, I'm gonna weave. Ugh, doing that front and back stitch is not much to weave into, so I'm gonna go a little further, like more, more in that one inch range. Just to get more backs of stitches here. All right, let's get our last piece of floss for that last little itty bitty leaf up there. Do a quick check. I don't think we've missed anything else. No, we got all the eyes. We got all the French knots. Yep, it's just that little little piece there. So let's find the end of this green. Bunch extra. So I like um, I like making little pom poms out of the extra floss so that's probably what I'll do with all of this extra extra nest here all right let's get our three strands oops so I just accidentally caught two strands it will not you won't be able to do this quick um, separating of threads if you if you pull two you'll get a knot and it'll get all twisted so it's it's just the, that's why I'm going one at a time to pull these threads out all right. Almost there. I think I'm, is there a book that you have out? Oh yes. So Betty, I do have a book. It's, it's from a several years ago, but, and actually, you know, we're going to send a newsletter out about it soon. I only have about, Ugh, like eight copies or something like that left and it's not being produced or printed anymore. So uh, if you do want the book from the website, that's, that's, um, it's, it's out of print now. And um, yeah, <laughs> we might actually do a couple patterns from there uh, coming up here. So um, but yeah, so if you if you wanted the book and I signed it, signed it and everything too, uh, it's we're getting pretty low. I'm gonna put an email out uh, like a low inventory alert for it. So <laughs> if you guys want it, you you're the first to know that it's like I'm practically out of them, and then I won't get any more. I've tried to order them from a few like wholesale places that have books, but it's been difficult to get it from there too. And it's still on Amazon, but I've ordered some from Amazon too. And it, sometimes they just don't come. So it's just like listed, but not actually available. So I don't know. Like I said, I have like, I think something like eight left. And then that will be the end of uh, that realm. We'll have to come up with another book to do sometime. Actually, I'd like to start doing fabric again too. That would be really fun. We, I used to have um, 
several fabric collections, but I stopped doing that and um, sold out of all of that fabric. That's actually for the granny squares quilt. I'm actually using scraps, <laughs> scraps from all my fabric collections. All right, last stitch. There we are. Okay, let's weave in the end and take a look at this. And we will, um, ooh, let me start heating up the iron. I'm gonna want the iron uh, to, to help me get rid of all the water that's gonna be in. And I'll show you that uh, once we take this stick and stitch off. It's kind of a fun, fun deal. Uh, all right, last little snip. Yay! Okay, here we are, you guys. I'm gonna take it out of the hoop. I'm actually gonna shimmy all my thread out of the way so I have some space here. Okay, and there we are. Look at all those little clover guys we did it tonight. And there's the peony, uh, the last of the little flowers. I think all of these little chain stitches looked look um just so cute I, I really like that actually i think if i stitch this guy again sometime i think i'm going to continue to do those little frilly um single chain stitches up there all right i am going to take this out of the hoop and now we are going to take that stick and stitch off so again this is that that stick and stitch we're going to get a little higher up here too so this is that stick and stitch Embroidery Stabilizer by Sulky. Uh, you, it's eight and a half by 11, so it fits in a printer and you just print the design uh, or photocopy the design right onto it. You stitch right through like we've done and then it comes off in water. So that's the part that we're gonna do now. So I have two bowls of water here. Um, so I can kind of show you that process. Uh, if you're doing this, I would just put some running water under the sink and I would do all this under running water, but I'm gonna do it uh, right here with the two bowls of water. I have one bowl of water um, for the initial, the initial soak and uh, a second bowl of water just to clean up um, any remaining any remaining bits. So this started as warm water and i think warm water works best look it's pretty cold we've we have been here for like two hours so uh it will work with cool water as well um but warm water is just a little bit better i'm also gonna grab a fluffy towel but all right so we've we've immersed immersed it and you can already see it trying to come off so it is getting it is loosening itself and it's actually um, kind of falling apart a little bit and that's exactly what we want so here you can see up close it's just kind of dissolving and you'll actually see flecks of it floating around in here so we are just gonna help it along so the big areas I'm I'm just gently rubbing my hands over like loosening it up and uh, once we get most of it loose I'm actually going to move my hands over every little stitch I can and I'm going to especially want to do that in some of the light areas like like the um, this, for example, you can see the you can see the ink, the toner underneath my light yellow areas. Those little areas, I'm just going to kind of gently massage with my fingers a little bit more. And actually, once we press press it, you won't be able to see a lot of that anyway, but I am paying extra close attention to those lighter colors. And this is where, this is where the patience comes in. I just, uh, like I said, go over every little stitch. We're going over every area. And I'm not gonna rush. We've already been here this long. I'm just gonna go a little bit more. <laughs> oh, my husband's still on. <laughs> on Facebook, he's saying the reveal is coming. <laughs> yep. Oh, yep, it's like, exactly. So Nolene's saying it's like a gum and the water dilutes it. It, it, it is kind of like that. It's, it's not gummy though. It's, um, you know, the back is kind of a sticker. 
Um, but it, it's more like flecks of, not paper, but it, it's almost like, it's not gooey. So it is kind of a little bit more like flecks of paper. There, I mean, so you can see. So it is, it does turn into, I guess, a sort of goo, but it's not, like it doesn't feel like sticky, like it's putting gobs of goo everywhere. It's actually, you can see it's, it's more like flakes in the water. So now you can see, uh, this is why I need that clean thing of water too, because I don't, I don't want any of it on my piece when I press it in a little bit here, because I don't want it all over my iron. So I am just, like I said, taking my time, going around some of these lighter yellow pieces here. And I'm being gentle because, you know, I don't want to pull out my French knots or anything. But I am still massaging it. <laughs> so Pamela is saying like a really cheap paper towel. Kind of, but with that gooey backing, sort of. So I suppose it'd almost be like toilet paper a little bit if that, you know, was getting super soggy. But uh, again, it still sort of has, it dissolves a little bit more than that, I think, too. The texture is just different. The texture just, it's not quite gooey, but it's not quite papery. It's somewhere in the middle. Oh, it's freezing there by you, Jennifer. Yes, you guys are probably just getting getting into like to the super cold stuff. Like whenever we start getting warm here, that's when you're starting to get just the, the opposite. All right, I'm just checking it. So it looks like we got most of those flecks from behind these light colors, like these, these yellow bits. There's not nearly enough or nearly as much black on there or the, the ink underneath. Same with these. We probably go over some of these pink ones just a hair more, but it's looking like we're pretty well done. Oh, I, I should get down. Um, I didn't do much down in um, this chipmunk yet. There looks like there's a little bit behind some of those stitches. So let's let's do him down here. Oh, but look how foggy it's it's getting this water from the stick and stitch. I think there was some in his ear yet, so let's get that in his little little pink nose. Because we didn't spend much time down at the bottom here. Oh, but my, um, you know, I had that water soluble marker where I was drawing on um, those lazy daisy stitches. Those that's gone, so that's dissolved. We'll have to see. So there's the pencil. You can still see my my pencil at the top there, but not the water soluble. Um, other lines that I drew in there. So the pencil will still be there, but we'll probably eventually, depending on what we do with this, that probably will get cut off. Okay, so when it's pretty clean like this, I mean, if you're doing it underneath your sink, you're not gonna have to worry about this. But uh, for me, when it's pretty clean like this, I'm gonna now switch to my cleaner water just to get the rest of all of these flecks off. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way. We'll get this nice clean water here and we'll do our final like rinse in here. And this is, this is where I'll just do another quick pass if there's anywhere that looks like they, it needs to get a little bit more. But anywhere where there was like a fleck on the edge, I'm hoping that this clean water will, will get rid of it. All right, and I think that's looking pretty dang good. So I'm actually gonna just do a like a gentle kind of wringing it out. I'm just kind of squishing it, looking like a crazy mess now. And I'm going to move um, my water out of the way and I'm gonna replace it with my pressing mat. I have my wool pressing mat. You can just use an ironing board. And the other thing I'm gonna want is a fluffy towel. So I have this white fluffy towel. It's just like a bath towel. And the reason we want a fluffy towel is because we are going to be pressing this and we're going to be pressing on the back, 
but I don't want to squish all my pretty stitches, right? Like these are nice little French knots. They're 3D elements, right? So I don't want to just smash that with an iron. So by having a fluffy, like a terry cloth um, towel here, my stitches are going to sink into it and it's going to um, keep the 3D-ness of the stitches. So this is a completely wet piece here. I just wrung it out just a hair, right? So I'm on the towel and I'm on my pressing mat or my ironing board. And I have my iron. So this just came out of the thing. I haven't let it air dry or anything like that. I'm gonna get my iron and I am gonna just press right on the back of it. You can hear that sizzle. What we're doing though is we are both heating it and drying it at the same time. So we're, we're pressing it and we're drying it. So um, it, is, it is getting soaked up into the towel. And you can actually, you'll start to see the white get whiter. Um, and that's, that's it just drying. So we're kind of like steaming it basically. Um, I'm using a dry iron, meaning I don't have any, I don't have any water actually in the iron. Ugh, and if you guys are wondering, this is my Panasonic. Um, uh, it's, it's, here's the, if you want to take a screen grab of like the brand number, but it is, it's called the 360 cordless iron. And holy cow, is it amazing. It doesn't have a cord. It does sit in a base. So over here, I'll show you in a bit. I have a base that it sits in and that's kind of what heats it up. But I can iron it like this for a while and it is not going to um, cool down. It's as hot and like a normal iron. It's amazing. It's one of my favorite uh, crafting um, things that I have. All right, you can see it's getting quite a bit lighter. Uh, um, when you're not pressing it, it goes back in the base. And I'll just show you guys just quickly there. It is right there. There's the base. So it just sits in there when you're not using it and heats back up. All right, so I am, I'm just gonna move my, I'm gonna press it one more time, but I'm gonna move my towel up. So this is all like sopping wet now. Not sopping wet, but it is, you can definitely tell that it has soaked up a lot of that wetness from my, from my um, embroidery. So I'm just moving it up so I have a new dry surface and we will do our last bit. We'll just press it one more time, but it is almost, completely dry. You can see where it's a little bit darker, the white in there, and that's where it's not quite dry, where it, around the stitches there. So I'm just going to kind of press into that area a bit more. But I love this method. It, you First of all, you take off that stick and stitch really quickly, but you have a perfectly pressed um, embroidery right away, right out of the water. So you're not you're not, um, you're not air drying it. I mean, you can, but this gets the wrinkles out. Um, so I like this better than air drying. And I think this is plenty good. I mean, we'll let, we'll let it ultimately air dry overnight, but it'll air dry, um, all steamed and nice and flat already. So let's, let's flip it around you guys. Oh, yay. I got a little thread cut here. I think let's just pull on the back of that thread a little bit to clean him up. There we go. Oh, it's sweet. <laughs> All right, so here, here's a little closer look. Um, so you can see it, that you can't really see any of the ink or toner behind it anymore. It's looking pretty clean. Oh, there's a little chipmunker. Uh, and there we go. It is looking just really pretty. So now I don't know what I'll do with this. I'll have to um, sew it into a, a quilt block or something, but there we go, you guys. You can, at this point, you can kind of shape the stitches. I know we have some, some kind of large stitches in here. Let me grab my needle again. So you can just kind of re-bloop these out a little bit. Uh, if you want to tighten them on the back, you can. But remember, this is still kind of drying. So, um, we're just kind of reshaping it a little, some of these heftier stitches or these like kind of bigger bloopier stitches there I think that looks nice I think everywhere else looks just fine we could go around to each one of these but I think they're actually looking okay 
So I'm, I'm happy with that. Yay! All right, you guys. Thank you again for sticking with me here. I'm going to flip you around. We'll call it an evening. All right. Hello, everyone. Oh, and there, there are my little, little lilacs behind me there. That came from our lilac bush outside and oh they smell amazing but see it is the, it's the exact same purple as um these little clover guys so here we are yay so that is our embroidery of the month that is may's embroidery of the month completely done we finished it <laughs> wasn't sure if i'd be able to get it done uh this week uh, it was a little bit a bigger one more stitches but uh we did it so thank you guys again for stitching with me uh, this will be up for the, um, till the end of the month that are available. This pattern will be available till the end of May. And, um, then it will be switching, switching over to June's embroidery of the month. So thanks again, guys. Uh, these videos will stay up on YouTube and Facebook. So you can watch them again if you wanted to see, uh, some, some different stitches again. And, um, I will be here again on Monday. So tune in Monday at 8.30 PM central time. We'll be working on the Orophil block of the month. So have a fabulous weekend. I will see you on Monday. Good night.